Superman. He's lost his mind. Oh, face it, Nick, it's over. And you know what? I'm glad. Sick or tired of racing around everywhere, trying to keep plates spinning. Sorry again, man. And Lewis knew nothing about this. No, absolutely not. Right, he's totally innocent. He loved you. Have you got anything to say? Nick, come on, no more lies. Oh, look, uh, things got out of control. We never expected it to get as far as it did. So you just stole my money by accident, right? <laughs> and then just stood back and watched my whole world fall apart without the memory of the man I loved to comfort me. How did you do it? Matter. Yes, of course it matters. Okay, so um, Archie left you that money, and we figured, well, Lewis would fleece you anyway. Oh, so you thought you'd beat him to it, right? Yes, no, I not Look, I had your account details, didn't I? I'd set it up with Mark, and you know, I was going through some money pressure, and it would have uh, really helped. Do you think I was so befuddled, old, and stupid I wouldn't recognise it had gone? No, 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 no. No, oh, we, we were going to put the money back into your account before you realised. And then Lewis died, so you thought you'd keep it, right? Wasn't wasn't like that. Oh. And what's your excuse? I just wanted to be my own boss, you know, be in control for once. And it felt like the barbers was my last chance. You oh. use my money to buy the show. You made me do it. We had to put it somewhere. It seemed a sensible thing to do. You make it sound like a business decision. It was fraud, theft, lie upon lie. Leaving aside that you're my grandsons, and that is breaking my heart, the money is the least of the problems. You made me despise the man I loved. No, in fact, you know, you stole from me twice over because you robbed me of the chance of saying a proper goodbye to him. And whatever you say and do now, I'll never be able to do that. You desecrated his memory. <laughs> well, I think he did a pretty good job of that himself. Don't. OK, I'll tell you what. Right? While we're in confession, well, why don't we just tell the whole truth? The only reason we had access to that money is because Lewis, for all his charms, was fundamentally untrustworthy. And yes, Yes, we shouldn't have stolen that money, but if he'd had the chance, he would have done exactly the same. Ugh. I didn't think you could sink any lower. Ram. No, don't you dare follow me. Don't come near me. I wash my hands of the both of you. You've got a charming home. Oh, thank you, Jackie. I made those curtains myself. And the carpet, that was a steal. It's got a two-inch pile. <laughs> so is the battle on. And there's not a woman alive who doesn't crave a deeper shag, but we've all got to make the best of what we've got. Uh, the conservatory's beautiful. Oh, I'd love to see it. Oh, no, you can't. Oh? Oh, we're decorating. Since when? Oh, it was a last-minute decision. We had a spare tin of emulsion, and I was just sitting around on my backside, so I thought... I'll go and get some more canapes. Oh, bless you, love. You should use a handkerchief next time. Nobody wants extra toppings on the canapes. Sorry, it's just... This is not a good idea. Mental health services have made us aware of Mrs Connor's situation, but I need to see for myself. Yeah, OK, but I don't want to risk anything that's going to set her back, OK? A recovery, have you? Look, we need to talk to her eventually. Things are moving really fast. Sorry, what? Moving fast in what way? A young woman lost her life. I understand that. And I have, have a responsibility to her family. Mm. And I want to be able to reassure them that Mrs Connor is not hiding behind her mental health difficulties. She's not hiding behind anything. Just look at her. I mean, anybody can see that. You can see that. Then I won't need to take up too much of her time. Uh, OK. Thank you. Just please... Please take it easy on her. I mean it. I'm Detective Sergeant Beckett. We have spoken previously. I just want you to find out how you're doing. Look, I know you're not up to answering questions at the moment. What, what questions? About the roof collapse at your factory. Look, it's OK. As I said, that's for another time, but 
I just want to touch base and see hey, if we Scott. work out. It's Peter Carla's partner. Yeah, there's no need for any of this. Get real, Nick. Natalie's an head case. The police are all over your books. We're well, finished. And at least this way, Gran gets to know the truth, and I can apologize to her. Well, like a charm, didn't it? Well, yeah, it did, actually. It means I don't have to lie anymore, not to her or Shona. And I don't want to think that I've been cheating on her. I'm not going to risk losing it to save your neck, am I? Right, and what if Shona goes anyway? What do we do now? Do we go back to the cabin, little cosy game of Monopoly? Oh, Granny, you landed on my hotel. That's two grand. No, no, Nick. I think you find you owe me 80. What a laugh. Well, I don't know, I guess. I'll just have to take what's coming to me, won't I? Maybe Shona is he in prison. More. Look, I can't believe you'd abandon Max and Lily. Oh, shut your face, Nick. No. I don't think Kylie would be very impressed. Don't mention Kylie. Why Carly? not? This is joke. Joke. No problem. No. Okay. Okay. Hey, look. I'm not proud of what I've done to Gran. But next to you, I'm practically a saint. <laughs> Junked hair. Thank you. How come it's on a plate? Oh, yes, that's first rate. Sally, this looks like restaurant quality. I'll get it. I've never been brave enough to attempt jugged hair. Mm. How did you prepare it? Well, I, um... Sorry to interrupt, but I just walked into my back garden and found some muffy old nag staring back at me. Daddy, aren't you standing right next to you? Uh, shall we discuss this outside? Well, what is the horse doing in your back garden? There's a horse in the garden. Is there a horse out there? Hmm. Well, it's only temporarily. Uh, there's a misunderstanding at the stables. Oh, Sophie said that you were thinking about buying the horse. Well, Jackie's quite the horsewoman. We had a right job keeping up with her when we were trekking. <laughs> They're my absolute passion. I once had my picture in Horse and Hound. Oh, yeah? Which one were you? We are eating our dinner, and it is eating my magnolia. Well, what do you want us to do, Yasmin? Invite him for jugged hair? Oh, I had jugged hair last time we went to the bistro. Well, it looked a bit like that, actually. I shall see you out. <laughs> right, Shaz, give me an with this. What's that for? I thought I'd make a water slide. I don't want the carpet's ruined. I've lost enough money on his account. You just want to frighten him, yeah? I think we're past that, don't you? Help me get it down. All right, come on, Gary, lad. Rise and shine. You don't want to miss the big finale. What are you doing? I don't like mess me. I used to have How Clean Is Your House on series link. Things you can do with white vinegar, you'll never know. <laughs> but you won't, anyway. Please don't. Wait. This is too much. You do what you want, but count me out. Told you, Gary. Only good for one thing. Not that you'd be asking her. Well, go on, get lost then. No. And keep it shut. No. Else I'll be putting this down for you next. No, wait. If you walk away now, you'll be just as guilty as him. You'll have to live with this. Or not. No. I'm sorry. No. No. She always was a bit squeamish. Not me, though. I was first in the queue when they were slicing bull's eyes at school. Happy days. Jim, Gary wanted to be here. He would be here. I mean, he must have changed his mind. Well, anything could have happened. A crisis, an emergency. What? You know what? I, I'm just going to get in touch with Leanne, just in case. Could I borrow your phone? Yeah. Um. Oh, um, did David find you? Yes, he did, yes. So did his brother. Well, at least we know who took your money now. You knew? Yes. It was me that discovered it. I mean, with a bit of luck, we'll be celebrating Natalie's arrest tonight. We should get a bottle or something. Gail, have you gone mad? You want to pop a cork and celebrate the fact that you knew that your two sons were ripping off your mother? What? Oh. Natalie was just the hired help, and it was David and Nick 
who planned this whole scam and they bought the barbers with the money. No, no, David wouldn't have known that. He admitted it. No, I, I can't believe that. I can. There was some money in the Underworld account that I couldn't explain and Nick said that it was Elsa's, but it wasn't because Leanne asked her. Well, why didn't you tell me all this, Sarah? Because when it's Nick, I didn't think he was capable of... What? Capable of stealing from his grandmother? For blaming it all on a dead man? Well, he was. They both were. And I am certainly going to tell you they are going to pay the price for this. You've got the nerve to show your faces. Kids out here, are you frightened they're going to find out what thieving little toe rag the father is? Bethany's taking them to the climbing wall. How could you? Oh, come on. It's more complicated than that. What's complicated about stealing from your own family? It doesn't get more black and white. I've never been more ashamed. Where's Graham? She's gone for a lie down. Oh, I can't sleep. All I want to do is wake up. Wake up and find none of this has happened. Turn over and speak with Lewis. How we're going to idle away our day. And what we're going to do with the rest of our lives. I'll make it up to you, Graham. Didn't you hear what I said earlier, David? You can't give me back what I've already lost. Lewis can't have a second funeral. There's only one farewell, and thanks to you, <laughs> I made a travesty of that. It's not your fault, Audrey. It's them two. It all makes sense now, that conversation I overheard. Do you mind? It's for the family, all right? Don't you dare. You think you're more a part of this family than Shona? After your antics. I'm not sure I'd want to be part of this family if I was in your shoes. At least you've got the choice. I'm stuck with it. Right, OK, you're right. I mean, all this is down to me and him, all right? But don't you see now about Natalie? I mean, she liked me and, and he made me go along with it. Oh, you didn't have to agree to it. Just stay out of this, will you? There was nothing going on with her. Serious fraud aside. I was never unfaithful. Oh, and that makes it OK, does it? You think I'd have sooner you'd have done this? Well, no, but... No. No buts. No good man has ever done something like this. Not to their own flesh and blood. So where do we go from here? Oh, where do you think, Nick? I mean, I could confess. I don't want to make things hard for anyone. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. I know we can't fix this or forget this, but we can work it out. Come on. We're a family. <laughs> well... I think you forfeited that claim the minute you allowed me to condemn Lewis. I need to speak to me mum alone, please. Not mum. Just leave. The grown-ups need to talk. Well, can't it wait? I'll be down in a sec. Sorry, mate. Business to sort. But don't go anywhere. I'll be back. <laughs> yeah. Off in a mess, and I'm, I'm not getting out of it, not this time. But I love you, Sarah. 
And I'm so sorry for everything that I've put you through. But listen, don't go home, okay? Rick's coming after you, and um, uh, you'll need to tell the police what he's done to me. And uh, there's something else. Uh, so when you are feeling better, we'd like you to pop in at the police station. But I don't know. Will we? Will, will I be safe there, Peter? Have you been threatened? Well, they want me, don't they? I mean, they've already got Rana. Who has? I lost my phone. Let me get your message, though. I went to the office. You've got to put a stop to this, please. It's my family. You won't tell them where I am, will you? What has your family got to do with Rana Habib? Have you spoke to her? Do you know where she is? Can I have a word? I'm uh, Carla's mental health practitioner. I thought it made it clear in my report she wasn't fit to be questioned. She isn't being questioned. Yes, she is being questioned. You, you were talking about Rana. I heard you. Mrs. Connor brought up Rana Habib. No, well, look, any sort of stress could do serious psychological damage to Mrs. Connor. Do you want to be held accountable for that? I'm just doing my job. Oh, OK, that one. Yeah, he's just doing his job. All right. OK. All right. All right. I'll leave it there. But I will be back. Goodbye, Mrs. Connor. Sally, that was absolutely gorgeous. You must have gone to so much trouble. It was nothing, really. Really? So, shall we push the sofa back? We could play some parlour games. Hey, maybe that fruit bowl's coming out after all, Paul. Actually, I'd really love to go out back and see your horse. And I'm a sucker for a post-prandial cigarette. Oh, well, you can have a cigarette in here. But you can't bring the horse in. <laughs> Well, he's a little bit unpredictable at the moment because, well, he's a thoroughbred, you see, mm. so he's used to wide open spaces and the Cheshire gallops. Don't <laughs> worry, we know how to behave around bloodstock. Julian's a bit of a horse whisperer in his spare time. Uh, maybe you should um, cut down on the facts. May we see him? Hmm. OK, for a minute or two. <laughs> if the old fella's a little frisky, you should consider having him gelded. Mm. Calms them down, no end. Believe me, I'll be seriously considering it after tonight. Or you could fix him up with an old mare. <laughs> Don't even think about it. I leave them alone! <laughs> look, just look what he's done! You can't miss what he's done. I'd watch your step if I were you. Is that the thoroughbred? Thoroughbred? It's an inbred, more like. Hey, steady on. You let his feelings. Right, that's the horse. Uh, Petty fours, anyone? <laughs> he's a uh, very. What would you say, Julian? Well, he's. He's. He's, uh, he's, he's weeing on your bro. <laughs> oh, sorry. Time for your pills. <laughs> I know what you're doing to me. Well, the same tablets you had before. Look, you're still here, aren't you? for that, Carla. We trust you. We'll soon have you on the mend. Whatever that Sorry, mate. Hurly burly of commerce for you. Another new punter. So you see, nothing's changed because of what you did. Had these off a fella in Bramall, top end apparently. Only ever used the three wood, but I found it very reliable. Must try it out on a golf course. <laughs> anyway, I've had a good day. But all good things, eh? I know Dave.
David hasn't had it easy. No, and neither has Nick. I mean, he's, he's not been the same since his accident. Oh, that was years ago. They said his judgment might be impaired. That he could do rash, impulsive things. Oh, this wasn't impulsive. It was a prolonged, calculated deception of someone who'd only ever showed him lots of love. He made a bad choice and he got stuck with it. I'm only asking you to show him the same kind of forgiveness you showed Lewis. What are you talking about? What he did to me was every bit as bad as this. I'm only asking of you what you asked of me. You asked me to forgive Lewis because you loved him. Well, I love my sons. And I am begging you to show them some mercy. If not for their sake, then for mine. And you can see how Corrie does when the cast of Weatherfield join the other soap heavyweights at the British Soap Awards live on Saturday night on ITV at 8. Next, have the acts done enough to save themselves and go through to the grand final? It's Britain's Got Talent, the result.